Ladies and gentlemen, sorry for the delay in videos. Unfortunately, I've visited Blighty and unfortunately there's been a lot of rain. So I had to come over here for family reasons and unfortunately since I've been here it's been raining and it's been flooding a lot. So where I actually live in Old Blighty, there's a big lake and the lake is actually overflowing. So the lake is threatening to burst. All the roads are uh, cornered off and unfortunately it's a bit of a disastrous trip. So I must say I'm looking forward to going home to my country. And before we get on to the main video, can I please once again remind you, if you haven't already subscribed to this channel, please subscribe. And if you really would like to help the work that I do here, you're welcome to buy me a coffee. The link is in the description box below. So let's get on to the main news story. Uh, it's been 100 days since the GNU started. And interestingly enough, the vast majority of this video is actually going to be around the economic reforms, specifically the idea that South Africa is having a resurgence in economic investment. This is all happening on the very same day that apparently the economic data in the UK has come out and is not good. The debt ratio that the UK government holds is 100% of GDP. That basically means they're paying off their debts. That's it. There's no other money for anything else, which is part of the reason that there's flooding here because no one's maintaining the infrastructure. And ironically, that's actually the reason that people are saying that there's renewed interest in South Africa, because under the GNU, there is now infrastructure reform, which means that economic activity is increasing. As an example, there has been a steel plant, which has reopened. Anglo-America is opening a iron ore plant. A Toyota the parts manufacturer is committed to reopening their business. And one of the reasons that has been cited for all of this is actually the stability in the electricity grid. In other words, we actually have electricity. So who's actually responsible for the economic optimism? Well, interestingly enough, the head of research at Standard Bank claims that actually this isn't due to the GNU. They claim that it's actually due to infrastructure reforms which occurred under Ramaphosa's first administration. I find that rather odd because underneath Ramaphosa's first administration, not a lot happened. We all saw it, apart from looting. Now, according to the head of research at Standard Bank, the new centralist government, and hold that thought, we will come back to it, is responsible for economic reforms that may mean that the economy may actually have a significant boost. In terms of exchange rate to the US dollar, it is already experiencing a 5.8% increase. That basically means you get more dollars for your rands. And accordingly, a lot of this is due to political stability and forms of, and forms of economic optimism. So economic optimism is basically that people just feel good inside about the GNU and the new government. But trust me, bro, it's not due to the GNU. It's like the last government, you know, the one that nobody liked. So what does this actually mean long term? Well, actually, a lot of it is being cited by all the credit ratings as being dependent on forms of political stability. So political stability, how, how exactly are we going to get that? The GNU, will it last? Well, it's only going to last if all the cabinet ministers can actually find a way to agree on disputes. We've already seen a dispute in the form of the Bella Bill. We saw that the basic minister of education didn't attend Ramaphosa's signing, and that caused all sorts of kerfuffle, and then basically said she was going to implement the bill anyway. So you may ask yourself, what are the actual differences the cabinet might experience? Well, the Bella Bill is one of them, specifically the language policy, which Ramaphosa has agreed that he would revisit. But another key one is NHR. Stay tuned for tomorrow's video, because i got a lot to say on NHR. The cabinet all agrees that what they actually need is to try to have some form of stability. How are they going to get that stability? Well, they've said they're going to establish a house cleaning mechanism. Now, I must be honest, I've read a lot on this. And I cannot tell you what it is for the life of me. All it basically says is that the president is responsible for everything and the cabinet ministers have powers enshrined in the constitution and they'll all basically do what they're allowed to do according to the constitution. Yeah, I don't know. It doesn't really make much sense. They all just say, yeah, yeah, dispute resolution. Yeah, that'll be great. Don't know what it is though. But everybody agrees business confidence will remain high if we're able to fix the infrastructure, which is ironic because that's what the UK is neglecting. Infrastructure here is not in a good state. Everything's flooding, as I told you, but the roads also are full of potholes. A lot of the roadworks haven't been done, and a lot of the maintenance on highways 
hasn't been done, which means that the grass on many verges are like nearly two meters high. The problem is that with all infrastructure, if you don't continually maintain it, it eventually gets to a point where the maintenance of it is so costly that it almost becomes prohibitive to do, which is why maintenance needs to be done incrementally. And this is something that South Africa has had to experience itself. A lot of the infrastructure wasn't done incrementally, and unfortunately that does mean that a lot of the infrastructure reforms that need to occur are rather costly. So they are going to need businesses' involvement. And lo and behold, business says that they are prepared to engage with the government so long as the government doesn't remain hostile to it. Now that final part, as long as government doesn't remain hostile to business, is rather important. It's important because Fekile Imbalula did the eulogy at Gordon's funeral. And it was the usual stuff that you would expect them to say, you know, Godan was a fearless and gallant revolutionary. And Godan's final wish was that the ANC would renew itself. And inevitably it was ANC would renew itself to working towards a democratic society. And I've got to ask you the question, do we not have a democratic society? I mean, we've been having elections like clockwork since 1994. So arguably we already have a democratic society. So obviously for the ANC to achieve its renewal agenda, it has set up a renewal commission, which is being head up by former presidents such as Tob and Becky. So does this mean that we're getting a return to some Thatcherite policies? Yeah, I don't know. Now, according to Fikile and Balula, this renewal program won't win anybody friends, but it might win you some revolutionaries. And again, I gotta ask you the question, a revolutionary of what? The revolution, so to say, was the end of apartheid. So what are we revolting against now? Now to help this, revolutionary fervor, the ANC Youth League says that it's uh, going to basically be doing some workshops on politics. Because that feeds people, right? Workshops on politics. That's what we all need. More politics. Now, interestingly enough, the ANC does seem to self-refer and does seem to understand what the challenges are. And namely, they cite corruption, resource-inspired factionalism, careerism, and money politics. In other words, looting of cash. The ANC identifies itself that there is no motive to help African people, but is rather being motivated by patronage and self-enrichment. Yet everybody knows this. Now I've got to ask you the question, if everybody knows this, what's causing it? It could be the centralization of power in the executive, key policies such as BEE that are enabling the state to be captured and allowing ANC card members to commit forms of corruption. But you see, as I asked you, what exactly is the revolutionary, the head of the South African Communist Party, during the same address at Goran's funeral, basically said that the struggle would be successful if capitalism was dealt with. So is the struggle to implement communism? Because it's communist centralist policies that have led to the degradation and capture of the state. So you know, what would honor Goran's legacy? Is more capture of the state and stealing money? That doesn't make sense. What would honor Godon's legacy if he really wanted a democratic society is enabling people to have better lives through economic upward mobility. In other words, capitalism. And arguably, that's exactly what we're currently getting because we have a centralist government, as Fakili Mbalula himself has said, it's not a socialist government, and they are working towards economic reform that would allow upward mobility. This is exactly what they need. And interestingly enough, that same communist juju is exactly what's happening in Blighty. Because you see, Sir Kia is currently being moaned at for basically taking a lot of cash out of the state. And he cancelled everybody's winter fuel allowance, but don't worry, every perk and benefit that he can possibly get in his last hundred days in politics, yeah, he's taken it. But this is the way communists usually run. The state isn't there to enrich others, it's there to self-enrich. But that's just my views. You can let me know what you think in the comment section below. Until tomorrow, bye.